Hello everyone, welcome back. Paul Trani here with the one and only Ashley Honstein. Hi. For a very first time yeah. in the San Francisco office. Lovely having you. Yeah, I'm excited to be uh, here. Straight from Minneapolis, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, awesome. as you can tell by the background. <laughs> <laughs> Minneapolis. City of Lakes representing. Yes. I actually didn't know it was called City of Lakes. Yeah. But it's good to have you here. We want to welcome everybody in chat. Heidi and Anna. Good to see you, Anna. Destiny as well. Katie. Lots of friendly, friendly names and faces in there. Steven, we want to give you a warm welcome. Also love hearing where people are from. We've got a, a full day today. I want to uh, thank Voodoo Val for her daily creative challenge. But today what we have on Adobe Live, as you'll see on the schedule here, uh, is the Daily Creative Challenge. And we'll be reviewing those designs during our segment as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, obviously, graphic design with Ashley. Then we have the XD Daily Challenge. And we'll be wrapping up the day with Melissa Gutierrez doing uh, some UX collaboration. So a little graphic design in the morning, a little UX UI in the afternoon is kind of how, uh, how, we, how we have this schedule going. So. Yeah. Gonna be really fun. Welcome Stephen from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It's directly kind of like north of Denver, which is where I'm from. So cool, good to have you here. So cool. fantastic. What else we got? We got lots of things. We'll be doing just a random chat and win giveaway. It's not so random because we schedule it. Yeah. But we also have, uh, just to do a shout out for the challenge, uh, you'll find the challenge tab right up here. Boop, there it is. And then it's all about creating a Back to the Future inspired image uh, with metallic and neon effects. Pretty much what Voodooval just covered. So that's going to be fun to check out. Totally. And I know you you have some experience doing portfolio reviews. Is that correct? I do. I love doing portfolio reviews. Okay. So, Into it. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about yourself? And then we'll yeah. dive into the project. So I am a graphic designer and illustrator from Minneapolis. Um, I currently work at Target. But today I'm going to talk about what I do on the side, which is a little bit more of my freelance work. And I do a lot of lettering and stuff like that for fun. So okay, yeah. yeah. Seems like you do a lot of like illustration and hand lettering. Yeah. And I feel just like looking at your portfolio, you're really good with color too. I feel I love like color. Even on on your website, I think this is like super, super tight. Again, Ashley Honstein, right up here, dot com, uh, and you can yeah. check out her Behance through the link in the about tab. But yeah, this stuff yeah. is fun. Mm -hmm. I love to really use color. Cool. Yeah, I wanna I wanna learn all about this like this. Yeah, kind of. That one was uh, an Adobe Sketch too. Oh, so. okay. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting. So, what what products are you gonna be using today? Um, so mostly I'm gonna be working with Adobe Illustrator, but um, I'll be able to show some of my process with sketching on my iPad with Adobe Sketch. Okay. And kind of showing how I take stuff from mood board to sketch to actually building finished logos. Very cool. So, Very cool. Yeah. yeah, and I like I like what you've shown me earlier, but just like how you take a project from the very beginning stages yeah. clear to mm -hmm. completion in two yeah. days. Totally. Which is cool. So check out her work. Again, just like great colors. Like I want to talk to you about that when we mm -hmm. when we dive into it. But, but yeah. well done. Yeah. So. And that's my dog. Oh, this that's is like adorable. one of the things I was excited about is putting my dog on a green screen. Oh yeah, <laughs> like these little these little puppers. Hey, yes. buddy. Yeah. Buddy. Spread him by his ear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So. Ah, well, fantastic. Yeah. So check out her work. Welcome, Chloe. Good to have you from Malaysia. Super wow. cool. Cool. Feel free to ask questions as we dive into this. Yeah. And what are we going to be diving into today? So today we're going to be kind of walking through my process that I take my freelance clients through from start to finish. So I wanted to start with walking through the brand questionnaire that I asked them, which kind of helps us get on the same page. And then we'll walk through some mood boards and some logos. Um, so most of the process on the upfront is with a freelance client that I haven't launched the project for yet. Okay. But then we'll work on a hypothetical project, which is fun because that means we get to do whatever we want oh, for yeah. gin packaging, which is my favorite liquor. Gin. Um, yeah, <laughs> so working on some fun packaging for that. So should we just dive in? Yeah, let's dive cool. in. So typically when I start working with clients, I will take them through a brand questionnaire which is something that I build in Adobe Acrobat, actually. So I'll build, this. yes, I'm excited about this. So this is just a document I actually built in InDesign, but I just leave these kind of blanks there. And then you're able to put in these like active text boxes so that I can just send this to my client and have them talk about yeah. that themselves. And then they're able to kind of spend some time with it and really sink into the questions. 
that we need answered before we can start really working on stuff. So instead of them just emailing me and saying, my brand's called XYZ, yeah. I actually can walk through stuff. And I would like to kind of read through some of these totally. too. Totally, yeah. So the first stuff I ask is obviously like, what's their name of their brand? And if it's a name they're locked into, because sometimes clients don't have great names. Oh, <laughs> so, that's a really good one. I mean, obviously naming should be like a separate fee, but um, and as an example, like the, this client specifically had a modifier attached to her name. So she was calling herself like Ashley Honstein blank. Mm. And I was just like, I don't think you need to have that because mm -hmm. it's brand yourself. So I wanted to be able to talk to her about that. Um, we also walk through like what content and services they're planning on immediately offering. And then in the next two years, what would they like to branch into? So just thinking like more future thinking mm -hmm. of hopefully helping them get excited about like the future of their business or company. Yeah, and I think I think that's a mistake people make. Yeah. You, and you can make that as a, as a designer locking into one thing and totally. you need to think like long term, mm -hmm. you know, what, what other areas you can end up in. Yeah, so. totally. Um, the next two questions are, what three words immediately come to mind when you think of how your branch make people feel and what three words do you not want them to feel? So making sure that like we want a brand to feel fun but not classic or boring. Um, and then that's like a good way to get my head in like a visual space because um, mm -hmm. oftentimes your clients aren't gonna be like visually <laughs> great either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, what type of people do you wanna interact with your content slash offerings? Obviously to us, that would be like, what's your guest demographic? But thinking like, how do you speak to your client in a way that they understand and more just like basic people talking? <laughs> um, are there any other brands, blogs, content creators out there that you love and admire in a similar field, both in what they do or how they look? Not that because we want to rip them off, but because I want to know who they're inspired by. Can you hit a uh, control or command F to go full screen on that? Yeah. Chips or is that right? No, command L. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Oh, well. You could like, do Command Plus. Wait, or there, just zoom in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sweet. Cool. Um, so other brands, and then <laughs> this is my favorite one to ask them because <laughs> they always have opinions. Are there any brands, blogs, content creators out there that you think do a bad job? That's interesting. Yeah. Obviously, like, we're never going to tell those people that we think they're doing a bad job. Mm -hmm. But I think, like, that way, like, like this client specifically sent me people that she thought, like, weren't, like, in the same field of ethics as she wanted to be in or places that she thinks were too fancy where she wants to be relatable. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything you absolutely hate visually? So if no. they hate a specific color, I know not to give them that color. And if I do give them that color, I, I know to justify it. it. I don't use, I'm not used to seeing these questions here. These ones yeah. are really good though. Yeah. Um, and then any other details you think that are necessary. So just yeah. things that we didn't talk about. Very cool. Yeah, so that's usually my first part of my process with them. And I get some really good answers back. I especially, I love the questions that are like, who do you hate? <laughs> Cause it's just oh, really yeah. interesting to see yeah, who they come like up dish. with. Yeah, give, give me the goss. Just, give, give, <laughs> give us the goss. Yeah. So then I from there, them. what I do is I will, um, typically my mood board process is next. So this is specifically a client I walked through this process and it was a baking company. So I take all of her questionnaires and distill it down into this kind of strategy page. So like, what do we know that she wants to be? Where is she going down the road? And then so those, you go from the questionnaire to this. Yeah. Is this your mood board? Are we getting into the mood yeah. board? Okay, yep. So it. this is kind of like my strategy slide. Not okay. a strategist, but I think that this is a good way to um, get echo back at the client. Like, hey, this is what I heard you say. Is this right? So she can tell me like, no, you didn't. We didn't get it right. And then we can talk about it um, or else we can kind of Hopefully we are on the same page. And then these yes and no words are the like things we are and things we aren't. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from there we go into mood boarding. So again, these aren't what we're gonna work on today, but I wanted to show just like the breadth of mood boards I like to provide to clients. So this one was kind of this idea of like handmade, playful and familiar. And I like to give them words that help them kind of attach um, some emotions to it. Yeah. Um, the next one was vintage, bold, and fun, because um, she had talked a lot about um, kind of liking retro scripts and stuff like that. And then the third one was a little bit more fancy, more artisan, crafted, and heritage, because she was a baking company. So just kind of thinking like, oh, like, do you want to feel like you're crafting all of these things yourself? So I think that that gave her a good range of things to pick from 
that all kind of laddered back up to this like strategy idea. That's good. And so sometimes, depending on the client, like sometimes you'll, it might not always be like three concepts. No. Like it could, it could literally just be one. Like mm -hmm. you could know exactly because they have a, maybe they have a clear vision, yep. which means you kind of have a clear vision. And totally. it might just mean like this is the mood board we're going with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think. It could make you, what do you think? Do you think you look indecisive as a designer if you give too much? Like, or is it too, I don't know. Like I'm just. I could see where you could think that, but I think for me, I like to approach my client relationships as collaborations. Mm -hmm. So like really, I want them to feel like they're involved in the process. So I feel like by getting them options for things and like really making sure that they're really structured and everything that I'm proud of. Like I would never put a mood board in front of them that I'm like, this isn't right. Yeah. I don't want to work on it. Mm -hmm. Like all three of these felt like they laddered up into like ideas that she was been talking about. So yeah. I don't know. It, yeah, it totally works. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I sometimes think that cause sometimes even in presenting like say a logo, sometimes mm -hmm. designers, there's all, all many, almost too many options. Yeah. Like you don't know what you're doing and something's totally. not being communicated. Yeah and you don't have this clear vision. Because yeah. even though you have three concepts here, they're all they're all very kind of similar and mm -hmm. consistent. And I think they also have kind of your style in it as well. Because we were just on your site yeah. and we see these like similar like yeah. colors and stuff. So it's a good, yeah. it's a good call. Yeah, totally. Um, how do you deal with, uh, how do you deal with clients that don't have answers for those questions? That's hard. I think like that was is usually when I would hop on a phone call and walk them through that stuff more. Cause like luckily most of my clients, I can just send them that questionnaire and they they already know what they want to do. Um, but if they didn't know what they're doing, I'd get them on a phone call and yeah. kind of talk through stuff. And like okay. maybe it would be more of a collaborative drawn out process where like instead of them saying, these are the three people in the field that I like, maybe I would be like, here's a bunch of people. What, mm -hmm. What's resonating with you? And yeah. do a little bit more of the research myself. Yeah, versus you can expecting. draw it out of them. Yeah, totally. Do you usually have an, like an ex, like a discovery, like phone call with them just to see if it's even a good fit at the beginning too? Sometimes I prefer to do most of it over email and that's mostly because okay. I work full time. So this is all happening oh, at night. Okay. So if I, a client wants to talk, it's usually like, hey, I can talk after five yeah. or on the weekend, which sometimes we do. And most of the time we just do email and it's actually fine. Okay, good, so, good, good. Yeah. Good, so, that is good to hear. Yeah. Um, so typically after this mood board process, my client would hopefully select one of these and then we would work on a couple logo options. But I think what this mood board process also does is it eliminates the risk that I would go down a path that they're not excited about. Mm -hmm. So if I provide all three of these to them, so she picked this one, but if I spent an hour crafting like really fun type like this and then she's like, not my thing, I would be like, shit, that sucks. I spent a lot yeah. of time on it. So I think uh -huh. it like that helps getting down a path really clearly of like, this is what she's into yeah. kind of a thing. Anna asks a good question. Where do you find your mood board images? Pinterest. So yeah. that actually is a good segue question, Let's Anna. Let's seg so, on cue, Anna. Good Thank job. You. Um, so basically this is my normal process. So now we can hop into what we're gonna be working on the next two days. Um, so the brand that I wanted to start working on is a gin packaging brand, which is fun. It's not a real client, so that means we get to come up with the name ourselves and come up with the mood board ourselves and we get to approve it because we're our own client. Mm -hmm. So typically what I do is I start on um, Pinterest to look for mood board images. I have a lot of boards already, obviously, that have a lot of pins on them. Um, and I started pinning this like Adobe Live board a couple weeks ago or days ago. Um, but typically what I'll do is I'll open up pins that I like and Pinterest has a really good recommendation system, which I really appreciate. So I'll open tabs for each of the images that I wanted, and then I can go down here and find similar images mm -hmm. or things that are kind of in the same aesthetic um, area that I'm going for. And then that way it helps grow it a lot faster while still feeling cohesive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'll do that. Yeah. Um, oh, one of my favorite tips for finding um, images that I like is going to Dribbble and finding your, your favorite people on Dribbble okay. and clicking on who, what their likes are. Oh yeah. Yeah, so kind of like creeping what through people's likes. <laughs> yeah, what what inspires them, huh? Exactly, so I feel like, oh, I really love so-and-so, so, oh, I'm not logged in, oops. Um, Maybe we could just go ahead and see your password real fast. Yeah, so, but you can go here and see like my likes, so you can see, <laughs> hopefully this works. Oh, cool, okay. So then you can see what I like so if hopefully if you were liking what I was liking, it would feel 
similar to that, if that makes sense. And you can do a similar thing with my hands where you can see the things that people appreciated mm -hmm. and kind of just go through, and that's a good way to kind of grow your mm -hmm. visual reference board faster. Yeah, you can do it. So basically Any how can all you, resources, yeah. s s snag the stuff, but again, I yeah. like this, like, it, again, kind of going down this recommended based on that design, recommended yeah. based on the people and they li their likes. Totally. So like, like this typography, and then hopefully what's all suggested down here is similar, similar like constructed mm. typography. So, yeah. Looks like we have some other Pinterest fans yeah, in chat do. as well. Anna, Ariana, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Um, yeah, and I think that's a good, Tim, we could talk about that at some point too. It's like when you can learn a lot, of course, you learn a lot even more from your failure years over successes, but when you totally. haven't resonated with a client and when would you fire them, that sort of thing, has that happened? Good. <laughs> that's good because you kind of got it hopefully figured out ahead of time that yeah. it's not a good fit. Totally. You know? I think um, when working with a client, like it's good to have like how many rounds of revisions and all this stuff that you need built into your um, contract with them so that if you do run into stuff that's like we're getting off track and we're doing things you have it out because mm -hmm. I think your client needs to respect your time and what you're doing as well it's not just a one-sided relationship yeah exactly. so yeah so um, these were the pins I started pulling for this gin packaging that I'm excited to work on with you guys um, so what I do then is I pull them all down into the scrap folder because I call it scrap. I just put the Z in front of it so that it sticks to the bottom. Oh. So I just kind of pull all the images. And then what I'll do is I'll pull them into a mood board file. So typically when I'm making mood boards for clients, I will be making a couple of them. But um, today, obviously, we just made one. But I just literally drag all the images in and kind of just sort them with things that they match with <laughs> to kind of just start physically building it. Um, and then eventually I'll distill it down into like a nice concise board. Mm -hmm. So this is what I kind of worked up for today. I so love it. really colorful, which is fun because sometimes clients are afraid of color. Um, but basically what my thought is with this gin brand is that it's kind of focusing on how like flavorful gin can be and how it's like a kind of more of like a fun liquor. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like a lot of liquor packaging is really serious probably because it's for adults, but I think yeah. there's a way to make it still colorful and feel kind of like a party instead of um, I don't know, making it like really serious and fancy just because it's a historical beverage or something. Yeah. So, yeah. So I like the approach. Again, it is. It's a fun drink. You're gonna have it. You're gonna have a good time. Yeah. Why? Why, why take it so serious? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm kind of trying to pair this idea of like serious typography with like playful illustrations mm -hmm. and color blocking and stuff like that. So it's very cool. Yeah. Is this the is this the mood board you kind of? came up with for today. Are, are leaning toward, okay, got it. Yep, so, um, yeah, some just fun stuff. Looking over. It's fun. Yeah, especially with gin, you know, botanicals and things like that, of course. Um, yeah. Uh, Important. Yeah, I'm cool. into it. Cool, so, um, yeah, here's just the PDF version. Ta-da. Um, Juniper. Juniper. Juniper berries, right? Yes, That's, totally. It took me forever to think of that term. Yeah. So, um, they're kind of two different names I've been playing with. So the first is Jamboree. So that's kind of the idea of like, it's a big, colorful, raucous party kind mm -hmm. of a thing. Uh, and then the other one was hijinks, which I kind of like the pun that's inside of it, even though it's not spelled the same. Um, hijinks, gin. Um, and then when I was actually looking up like the origin of the word hijinks, apparently it was actually an old drinking game called Hey Jinx, which kind of oh. felt interesting. So I've been just kind of sketching with those two That's interesting. names in So mind. this is fun. Again, just it's a gin a gin yeah. that you're making and what was the first so hijinx, what was the first one? Jamboree. Jamboree. Yeah. So cool. Cool. Let's see if there's any questions. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. High drinks. We'll get probably lots of puns. I saw a pun earlier about gin. Totally. Um, cool. There are some questions oh, around Juniper. Cry. I like that. It June. is June. June. Ipper. <laughs> the month of June. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> Juniper. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Clever. Cool. Into it. So, uh -huh. yeah. Cool. So, we could switch over to my iPad and talk about sketching. Oh, next. yeah. 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 We can. 
I'll just turn that on. So this is fun. Yeah. Kind of, again, covering gin, hijinks, jamboree. Totally. We might even create a, if you want to, we could always like create a poll or have people vote as we start to look at yeah. this stuff. Will be interesting, but yeah, we'll take a look. Cool. Ooh, so, what app are you in? Uh, I'm in Adobe Sketch, so which is actually one of my favorite apps for sketching. Um, I don't like sketching by hand because I'm pretty sloppy. So uh -huh. um, the iPad Pro was kind of a godsend <laughs> when it came out because yeah. then I can sketch and kind of do layers instead of sketching and being mad that it's not perfect right away yeah. and then moving on from it. Mm -hmm. So this is really my nasty first board where I, I just it. go through and just draw whatever is on my yeah, brain yeah. to kind of feel what's working. Um, so a lot of, again, like the jamboree idea. Oops, that's fine. You have jamboree over here. Um, and then playing around with hijinks and kind of this more like constructed type that could maybe have um, mm -hmm. some inlines in it. Yeah. Um, and I'm not thinking too much about the bottles just yet because I want to make sure that I find a logo that feels right for the brand that ties into the mood board before I really dive down trying to like figure out the whole process at the same time. So yeah. So what I do from here is I'll start kind of picking out ideas that I like and I'll make a more cleaned up sketch. So I'll typically trace over some of the messy stuff oh, okay. to Wonder. kind of get to cleaner versions. When I used to sketch with my sketchbook, I would literally take tracing paper and like tape um, tracing paper over all of my sketches and I'd go like six deep before I got oh. to something. But obviously oh, wow. here you have the undo button. Yeah. So I don't have to do that a million times. The undo and you can also add layers and adjust the transparency. Oh my God, totally. All yeah. That stuff. Um, yeah. And then from there, what I'll do is I'll start making notes of just like what I really want these things to look like. Because mm -hmm. again, like I do a lot of hand lettering, but it takes a long time to get to a finished product. So mm -hmm. it's more fun to kind of just like write notes of what I'm thinking it'll look like. Mm -hmm. So that's very cool. Yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. Uh, team is asking about the client's budget and stuff like that, which is also, do you yeah. ever like, even in this first exploration phase, yeah. do you kind of, you, you, you kind of have the pricing all squared away? Oh yeah. Before I even like touch pen to paper, I have a contract signed and I do 50% <coughs> down. So I never start work without having that deposit on the work um, and all that stuff. Um, so no, that's cool. They don't care how much they have to spend on a project. <coughs> I apologize. So team is asking when they don't share how much they have to spend or how much they spend on similar projects. Um, typically what I'll do is if it's a project I really like, I'll cost it out and I'll say like, let's discuss. So it's clear that like there is some wiggle room, but I will never offer like, but I can go down. Yeah, don't <laughs> like, ever do that. Yeah, but you can. Like you, can you, you can always start high and, and go down, but you never start low and then go up. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Actually, this sounds more expensive now. Right, <laughs> so. yeah. Um, yeah. But that's good, and I think, so if, if you haven't joined us the past couple days, I know Anna McNaught talked a lot about that because she kind of went over the business of like Instagram and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So she got into some of those details. So hopefully people have been joining us all week because mm -hmm. she went into that and like even, it might be even based on uh, your client, whether they're, if they're a target or like a, a big corporation, it might mm -hmm. be determined, you know, as opposed to mom yeah. and pop place, you yeah. might adjust your pricing. Yeah, pricing I definitely know people that have different rates for different size businesses. Yeah. So they'll have like their nonprofit price, their small business site, and then their, their price, and then their big corporate price. Yeah. So really that way you can adjust for people's needs versus mm -hmm. always saying like, you know what, I always need my big corporate price for everything when it's a startup that's literally one person that needs help kind of yeah. a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. I saw somebody ask what app I'm using again. So this is Adobe Sketch. So I think it's free app on the app yeah. store. Yes, it is. Um, but then you have all the fun brushes and stuff, which is nice. Oops. Yeah, I love it. I love so, how you again, you're just kind of going over, you had the rough sketches. Oh, thank you yeah. so much. So went over rough sketches and then now I went over them with just a bolder brush to kind of get a little bit cleaner on what I'm thinking. So with this specific kind of lockup, I'm thinking that the type would be bold and friendly um, with an illustration in the middle that's kind of the juniper berry, which is the main flavor in gin. But because of that mood board being really colorful, like could you add confetti with it and make it kind of just feel more like a party versus just yeah. like an elegant botanical? Um, and then that illustration being hand drawn. 
I also number them in order of preference so I know which ones I want to work on first. So obviously oh. this is my favorite one. Oh, nice. Um, the second one is using that hijinks name. So is there a way to get this kind of like blocky typography with an inline? Um, kind of playing with like, do I want the crossbar on the J or not with clean lines? And then um, for that distilled gin type on the bottom, I wanted to try to work on like an extended classic serif, not, mm -hmm. a, not a slab like it's drawn. Um, another kind of lock up one down here that's like got a clear shape defined mm -hmm. by the name, um, more of a graphic illustration of the juniper and secondary typography. And maybe the word hijinks can be the letters are all different color. Oh, so, that's fun. So. And then this last one, ooh, oops. Um, kind of a more arched typography that kind of, how do I make it feel a little bit more interesting? Like it's a little bit vintage, but still friendly by using like softer edges. Yeah. So, yeah. Into it, I think you've, you've thought of like a lot of, uh, a lot of different options still within yeah. like this, you know, kind of based mood on board. that, like mood boards and yeah. everything. I will say I do bring my mood board in so I can think about it as I'm That's on good. a different layer because you can import an image as a layer. Uh -huh. So then that way I can hop back and forth and kind of think about like, here's that like kind of mm -hmm. extended serif idea that I like. Yeah. So I, like I can it. talk about it. So right uh looks like Basilio mentions Gemini. Do you know Gemini? I am a Gemini. Is? You are a Gemini. Yeah. Yeah, Gemini's Gemini is already out. It's Gemini. Yeah. Gem uh, Project Gemini is what another is drawing app that drawing oh. app we're working on. Cool. I'll show it to you later, maybe after fun. the stream. Yeah. I was like, so, I am a Gemini. Uh, <laughs> I was yeah, excited. what are you talking about? <laughs> excited for Gemini? Yeah, yes. we're excited yeah, for you. It's my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so, so to, it combi it's like a, it's almost like sketch and ideas or uh, Illustrator draw. Sorry. Okay, I think I have heard of that actually. Uh, like in one. Yeah. So you you get similar results, and then you know you could do so much more. But yeah, that's know. cool. You, what you've been basically doing in here is using the well, you probably started with the pencil, yep. and now you've kind of moved on to the mark, the thin mark. What is this one? Well, so there's all those brushes you I can download. Um, so I download a ton of brushes. Okay. Very cool. And. I use different ones for different things. Yeah. So just what feels right, I think I'd, because sometimes when you're doing that more cleaned up sketch, if I do too thin of a line, then I feel like I still am thinking about it as like a pencil. And if I didn't want thin typography, it's hard to figure out what that lockup is actually going to use and how much like, when you do like an arch type, you need the word and the letters to be thick enough to actually be legible through that. Mm -hmm. So I was, trying, I was trying to find like something that doesn't vary based on pressure. Oh yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, totally, but still has some weight. Do you ever do you ever just start directly on the computer and not sketch? Sometimes, even if I don't start on the computer, I have little my sketchbook here. Um, I can hold it up to the camera because I think it's it's almost too finished if you start directly like on the computer. You I get, can't get I feel anywhere. like you get lost in the details a little too yeah. quickly. Yeah, even if I'm not on the. Um, starting on the computer, I'm usually, like I even take my iPad to work with me, but I'll do like tiny dinky little sketches just to like block out lockups even before oh, yeah. I, um, if I don't have time to do much sketching. So, yeah. Oh, Let's check this out, do you mind? We're gonna use this uh, GoPro. Let me see if I can find one I can show. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that okay? Yeah. If we look at all your personal notes? Yeah. Just put it on all your, the page that has all your uh, passwords? Yeah, here, here's all there. my passwords. Um, let me find a page I can show. I know I have some. Oh, here, this is old. But um, I did like that a AIGA Command X competition at the National Conference a couple years ago. So I had to do, like, it was like 24 hours to do packaging. So obviously, you don't have time to sketch. Oh, that's So even if fun. I do th the sketches, like, again, really shitty. <laughs> But Ooh. I think it kind of gets at the idea of it, or like, here's me trying to like make like some sort of like monogram lock up with uh -huh. the name. Um, but yeah, oh, so cool. even if I'm not, don't have time to do like this like detailed sketching process, like it's at least like I'm thinking about it. Yeah. There's weed it. cookies, so there's a lot of little pot leaf illustrations. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So anyways. That's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing yeah. this, that too with us. Yeah, totally. On the. Cool. We'll just, should we switch back to your iPad? You want to? Sure. That's what you're going to jump to still. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that is very cool. Yeah. So that's kind of my sketch process. Now, um, I think, so you're still playing with like two names. 
I yeah. wonder if we should get like a, 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 let us know what at what point maybe we have everybody decide like yeah. not the not what you see on the screen but after chat and win we'll kind of dive into the naming of it. That sounds good. But let's dive into chat and win right yeah. now. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for chat and win. So just say something in chat. We'd like to, um, would love to uh, hear what uh, you're a Gemini. I am. So let us know what is that a Horus? What, what do you call that? What, do you, what is your, what, what, your it's, sign? It's my sign. <laughs> so tell us what your it. sign is. We want to know your sign in chat. Just yeah. say something. Um, I'm a uh, Capricorn, and we will. Draw a name at random, and you will win some fancy stickers. A hundred free stickers from Sticker Mule. So Ooh. that's what we're giving away today. That's good. Any Capricorns out there, or any Geminis? We got a Libra, Leo, uh, Virgo. We have a Jin sign. <laughs> and <laughs> congratulations to Lu Lucia. Fermenti. Congratulations, Lucia Fermenti. You are the our winner of Chat and Wins. So you're going to get 100 uh, three by three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. So we'll contact you uh, through Behance. So look for a message from Adobe Live and congratulations to you. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so what I'm trying to do right now is upload my sketch to my Adobe Creative Cloud files. Your what? Ooh, okay. So this is how I get stuff between. What I really like about Sketch is that I'm able to kind of take it from my app to my computer really easily. Mm -hmm. So it's just loading. Is that on Wi-Fi? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's what some of these apps allow you to do um, is uh, obviously sync. Uh, and I want to also remind everybody of the uh, the challenge that's going on as well. And that's what the design feedback countdown is on the other side of the screen. We have that challenge tab and it's all about creating a back to the future. See right here, back to the future inspired image with metallic and neon effects. So that's what we'll break for next uh, in about 56 minutes. And it looks like there it is. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, so there's two different ways to get your sketch from Adobe Sketch, which is one of them is like you can literally open it in the program, which is like magic, because you literally just say like send to computer and yeah. it pops it open. Because I'm taking this from like a Photoshop file to a logo file, I thought that I would just upload it to my Creative Cloud files, which made more yeah. sense. So Sounds cool. Here's my working file. Ooh, so. this is good. I kind of want, I, like, yeah, this is fun. Are you yeah. just going to play with both of these for a bit? Yeah, I, I still, think, I think we'll, let us know. I think we know. should do the poll. Okay. I want to know what people like better, because I really, it's hard to decide on naming, especially when you're not, like, a copywriter. Yeah. But um, I'm going to work on both logos, but I'm curious what people, or both options, both naming options with logos, but I'm curious what people are liking better to do a poll. So. Yeah. Okay, we will do a poll for the name of this gin, this playful gin. It's either going to be Jamboree or Hijinks. So. Yeah. so anyways, so what I start with is I take that exact sketch and I bring it into my Adobe Illustrator file. And I'll typically put it on a layer by itself called Sketch. So I remember not to work in it. That way I can also dim this and really use it as kind of like an outline to start building structures off of versus trying to go side by side. So. Um. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Tim's faster than I am. Tim posted a straw poll. Great. Thanks, Tim. Cool. Uh, I'm going to vote on this, too. This is yeah. it. OK, so that's, you can see, click on that link, and that's the, uh, the poll. It's a straw poll. So you could either pick hijinks or jamboree. Uh, just pick one. Actually, should pick, pick the name of the the gin, the brand, brand name is what I should say. Um, and this yeah. is hard. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> I couldn't decide. I'm, I was like hoping oh. that when I was sketching it last night, I was like, hopefully one of these like feels better. Like normally when you start sketching it, like one feels right. 
Yeah. Um, but I, I liked how both of them could work. I'm so. I'm kind of leaning toward hijinks. Yeah. I might try a version of this logo Ooh. that I really like in hijinks too. Ooh. Look, by the way, so far, keep voting, by the way, but hijinks does have a considerable more. lead. Huh. That's funny. Cool. Yeah. Um, so typically what I start out doing, I will probably end up doing some custom type work on this. I do still look for like fonts that I think are getting at what I'm hoping for. So I have these kind of like more like extended sans faces, um, a couple different, I don't know if this is like, a, it's also a sans I guess technically, but it's got more of these interesting like feet on it. Yeah, um, and it, it, it feels old. Like yeah. it's a sign was painted that way. Yes, or totally. And what's fun about like that fonts, one's like, fun too. The one across from it, that that one's this cool. one. Yeah. yeah. So like, what's fun about these though that I always like is even though it's um, feels older, the second you start putting it in like really funky colors, it mm -hmm. starts kind of getting at that like I don't know, like more modern feeling. Yeah. I guess. Like, yeah, I you like have fun. modern modern colors here. Yeah. So then you kind of get that juxtaposition. I feel like that's always something that I like a lot in my work is like juxtaposing two opposing ideas. Uh -huh. It's like vintage colors with, or vintage type with bright colors. It's not something you usually see. I like it. Yeah. So. And it just plays up that playfulness. Like the colors that, that you just had there are very totally. like, playful, so. Yeah. Um, so let's get started. Yeah, um, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Let's design away. Boop, 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 yeah. boop, beep, boop, boop, boop. So maybe I think I am gonna start working with this conglomerate typeface, which I think actually I did download a bunch of fonts um, from the Adobe Type Kit, which was fun. Um, Cause I noticed that there's like these like collections now, which is fun. A couple of them by designers that I actually know. That like it's like their curated collection of fonts that they recommend for projects. So I kind of downloaded some of those and there's actually mm. a lot of good faces in there. Um. Do you ever use, um, wow. Hmm. There we go. Uh, Adobe Fonts, formerly Type Kit. That is what I was talking about. Okay, yeah. that is what, perfect. Yeah. Cause you're, mm -hmm. yeah, that's. That's what I was thinking of calling the it font, Adobe Type The kit. font packs, is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I think Tad Carpenter had one that I really liked. Um, that was like more, I don't know where it went, but I downloaded that one the other day and it was kind of fun. Uh, boom, let's just see. Bam, just gonna show this out. So again, yeah. uh, fonts.adobe.com, if you go to font packs, you can get some, uh, you know, and again, I'm, I'm like, I'm surprised we haven't had this sooner. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what, I'm always, people are always trying to like pair fonts and there's that whole situation. Mm -hmm. And here they kind of already did that. So, you know, it's like scribes of yore, like if you wanted some old school one, but you yeah. liked Tad Carpenter, is it the build a brand? No, it's probably not that one. Yeah, no, it was that one. It was, okay. There was a couple of really cool ones in there. Okay, so we could activate that immediately from that screen, or we can take a look and see. Yeah, There's these a lot are of good ones on there. I like, uh, yeah. Coquette's good. Coquette. Yeah, there's that shackle pen one I pulled. Okay. Yeah, it was just a good mix because I think those yeah. ones were good for pairing with each other. You know, like if you want to have a brand, like you obviously don't want to pair like two, like mismatched serifs. So it's like uh -huh. good to give you here's your serif and here's like a script that would work really well with it. Yeah. So I thought that was really interesting. I like it. Very mm -hmm. cool. We'll just switch back to your screen. Yeah. So I just took that font that we were kind of digging the conglomerate and just kind of placed it on a type on a path, kind of over my sketch to start playing out like how does this type work with this type of a lockup? Mm -hmm. um, that kind of a thing. And can you? I think I think it, I get asked this a lot. If you don't mind. Yeah. Um, what if you wanted to put that text on that curve, if you wanted to put that text on the inside of that line, how do you do that? So you drag this top like middle line over. Yeah, and drag, drag it, in. it in. Obviously this jambo. <laughs> so yeah. obviously it would need to be smaller. Um, yeah, just, just so people know, because I think that's like, yeah. people are amazed when they see that and are surprised yeah. it's like so easy. Oop. Yeah, um, something that I like to do. So if I was just doing it straight up on a circle, um, yeah. Click. So Jambor, Jambori. Um, so here it's the exact same thing. So it's centered on the top. Mm -hmm. So say you wanted to have something opposing down here. Obviously, if you pulled it in, it's not going to be a complete circle. 
Like it's kind of. How did you duplicate that? Did you hold down the shift key or something? Or? Uh, Command C and then paste in place. Oh, okay, got it. And then. So technically, it's a different it's a different circle, one yep. on top of the next. But boom, there it is. There awesome. it is. But so it's not like a complete actual circle badge. Like it's kind of distorted because the mm -hmm. type is different. So what you can do is you just drag yeah. it out to match uh -huh. the top line of that, and then I drop it. You are. And now you got a badge. You That's are like a perfect a, stamp. Love it. Yeah. You're an Illustrator Pro. Mm -hmm. Love seeing it. You get to use it all day, every this day. This is your go-to. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Go-to. Yeah. Because I'm I do mostly branding work, so this. I use this more often than anything. I'm usually in InDesign to make decks. So, <coughs> yeah. So I kind of, I'm liking where this type's going. So I think. Although um, we're still, we're still torn on the name, but don't let that stop you. I, know, I think hijinks would work here too. See, it's a little bit shorter, but. I liked, I actually like Jamboree how it wrapped around yeah. it more personally. Got a bunch of eyes. <laughs> that works. <laughs> hijinks. Um, I also liked hijinks. So the, Apparently, Hijinx was originally Hijinx, and it just over time changed. So, but I'm gonna keep using Jamboree because I, I like that one. And you were also telling me earlier, Hijinx. It's a what, drinking game. It's a drinking game. From like the 18th century. Like, if you Google it, it's like a bunch of etchings of people um, sitting around a table, and it was basically some sort of game that if you didn't win, you had to drink the whole drink. Oh, really? <laughs> so, I don't know, sounds like a, some college drinking games that I remember. Um, so what I'll do to kind of build this round oblong oval in the middle is I'll probably use the Pathfinder tool. So I take two circles and then kind of connect them in the middle by connecting the anchor points. So now we've got that. Wait, I don't want a tour right now. So that's how you'd make that inner oval Yeah. So two circles, and then if you take the side anchor points and kind of make a rectangle that matches all those anchor points, so you mm -hmm. kind of get that oval bit. You could do like a rounded circ uh, rectangle with rounded yeah. corners. You totally could do that too. Um, Which I just love how you can select a corner and make it rounded with the inner oh control. Oh yeah, totally, point. yeah. Like, I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah, you can also, just select certain parts of it so you can make it shorter or taller. Um, so that's kind of... Yeah, you you do your thing. We wanna welcome everybody. Let us know if it's your first time joining us today. It would be cool. Uh, we'd really appreciate you and wanna say hello to you. It is Ashley's very first time on Adobe Live, so we mm -hmm. appreciate her hanging out with us and sharing her skills, a lot of her stuff. She's this is like top secret what she does at work. She won't really tell us, but <laughs> she's, uh, she's a force when it comes to branding and design. So uh, you can also get started on your own design. That's what the design feedback countdown clock's all about. You can check out the challenge tab there. Chris Young, cheers to you, Chris. First timer, welcome. Miroslav Oparev, cheers to you, my friend. I'm gonna be drinking a lot of coffee. <laughs> There's a lot of first timers here. I do a toast per person. And I love how in Illustrator you can actually preview fonts that you haven't installed yet. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Just FYI. That's cool. Kashish, cheers to you. Mm. And I love watching you work. I actually just love watching that font change. Just let's do this for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Because this Enjoy. is tricky. Because it has to be. Luckily, it has to be. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. I mean, so, it has to be legible. Like, how much personality do you give it? Versus, that is so good. So. Ooh. You can drop. S slow clap. Uh, Caitlin says, "Jimbery." I like that too. Jimbery. <laughs> That's pretty clever, <laughs> huh? <laughs> That's good. To my Adobe, so you can filter your Adobe fonts here, which is nice. So that if you, I don't obviously have as many that I have on my whole computer. So then that way you can sort the ones that you downloaded for your project specifically mm -hmm. quickly. And then there's the find more at the top, just so people know about it. Find more. These are fonts that you don't have installed yet. Some of them you might have installed, but yeah, these are oh, how your cloud probably is how I download them. Yeah. That's cool. You got it. And then, so you could you could still sort through the filters. Yeah. So you could say, hey, all the Adobe fonts out there, give me the sans or slab serif. Yeah. 
of the thousands of fonts that are out there. I see you can sort by weight too. So yes, I'm looking for sans right now. A lot of them are not even through the A's. I know. You can, and you, I like I like where you're going with this like the thin, thin look. You could actually yeah. sort by the thinness too. Oh really? Yeah. I think it's more like a medium or a regular weight because I want to have something that contrasts with this um, top face. Because mm -hmm. if I made it the same weight, it probably wouldn't read in the same hierarchy. Because the brand name is Jamboree, but like the actual product is Craftogen or Barrel Craftogen. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use just wet yet. Um, let's go back to where we're. There is a to did I just oh there's Adobe font called Gin. <laughs> oh really? Okay, we'll Gin check regular. that out. I wonder if that's, find more. I just love how you can like just There's so many. That. That's really nice. I didn't know that you could preview fonts that you had installed yet. That's really nice. That amazing? It's kind of hard to envision it in your design mm -hmm. when you're not there yet. I agree. Hmm. Some of these are kind of cool. So you can do it, yeah, Destiny, you can do it by the thinness, you can do it by the width of the font, is how you can filter them. Yeah. Serif, sans serif, like all the different properties. I still like going to, um, I think one thing it doesn't have is, if you, I like going to the website because you could sort by fonts that are gonna be more like a heading font. Mm -hmm. Decorative versus paragraph yeah. text font that you'd probably, it might be easier to read. So, thank you, Gary. Good, good tip. You can type G when the list is out. You could jump to the G's if you want to. But we're just kind of playing around. Playing around. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything I super love for this. Ooh, is, that one's. That one's fun. That one is cool. I don't know if it fits like there, but I, I cool almost want to like put that aside. And we're gonna save that. Yeah. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Because I'd say like this and this together, it's like they're too close of font families. Yeah. Like, I, it's, if you're gonna I, use this, you might as well just I, use a lighter weight of the top one. Yeah. So. And the thinness of that, the thin spots are almost start to disappear. Totally. And which is. I feel like a logo that's not, not great. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just stick with the uh, acumen for now. So. Uh, so. Kashish, just so you know, so in terms of in, in terms of turning your text inwards on the path, how to mirror it so it's still reading left to right. I don't know, but basically it's that line. If you see that line it's there, you're going to be able to drag it. Or you just click and drag, and then you can flip it and turn it any way you want from there. Yeah. So hopefully it gets you out I'll of the jam. Uh, yeah. Just flip with it. Yeah. Somehow. Eventually it works. And Sh and Schumann, again, yeah, choosing the font, that's a difficult uh, process, you know? Um, How do you choose the one? I mean, it's fun. One? I think, honestly, like the way you choose the one is you just try a bunch of them until yeah. you find one that works. You try you try a bunch of them, you get, get it really, really messy in Illustrator, mm -hmm. you leave, you come back, right? Yep. And then you're like, oh, that's, the that's one. where we need to go. So. Yeah. And honestly, like, I have a hard time with fonts actually, like, finding them and, like, making sure that I like them. And that's why I've started doing a lot more custom type stuff. Mm -hmm. Just because I'll take a base font and I'll start modifying it to get to what I wanted in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I think we'll leave this one here from now. I want to go back and I think draw this in my iPad eventually. But I think for now we can jump over to this hijinks one because I wanted to do more custom type here, which might be fun to work on together. Yeah, into um, into this. So what I'll too. first do when I'm drawing like a custom sans like this is I'll drop in some ruler lines so everything's got the same um, height. Um, and luckily you can see in this word you have a lot of like letters. So like the H and the I is like pretty much the same letter rotated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so most of these we can build off of each other, which is fun. And there are, there is a font out there that does have those lines in it. Totally, there's a lot of them. Um, I think it's just fun to build stuff. No, by so, all means, like do your, do do your thing. Yeah. But I think that's like a good call. I like how this, 
The hijinx, this word is, I don't think anybody's gonna have a problem spelling it. And mm -hmm. I think in terms of a brand, I think it's good. Just like have, have something that's easy to spell. Totally. And yeah. is hopefully available. All that good stuff, yes. right? Yeah, that's the, um, um, that's the luxury part of not actually this not being a real thing is I don't have to look into like if this is legally available, but <laughs> maybe it's Oh, maybe hijinks, it's the hijinks. actual, yeah. yeah. Well, it is also made up, so that's okay, right? Yeah, huh. so, let's see. So I put a square behind these because I knew that I wanted my letters to be kind of based off of a square, whether that's right typographically or not, I don't know. But um, yeah, so I'll build it with just different shapes and I'll probably flatten it. Just using yeah, Heidi, container. that's a good question. How do, your, how do you get your clients, your freelance clients? How do um, they contact you? How do they? I'm pretty they active on out? social media. Um, I, so I think a lot of my clients come through just like networking with different people there. Um, yeah, I don't really do much else besides that. Like my freelance hustle like really isn't that insane. Cause again, like I work full time. So my mm -hmm. clients are pretty limited that I take on. I don't want to be super busy. So they're usually reaching out because a friend of a friend knows them or something like that. Like it's all kind of like word of mouth and it's, exactly. it's the right amount of busy for you, right? Yes. That's good to hear. I feel like everybody there's always somebody looking for a graphic designer because they're working on some, Something. their own side hustle or whatever. Exactly. Who knows? So, I, I agree, Kerwin. When it comes to your least favorite letter to illustrate, is the letter R. That's I like of, R. You know what? I don't. I like? think it's a tough one. This oh. freaking thing. I'm <laughs> kind of hoping the stream ends before we get here. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard because you got to figure out that balance of the top curves. R is fun because you get the you have the little leg. So you can That's do whatever true. you want with the leg. That's true. Yeah. So when you work on type and outline mode, I think it's easier to kind of make sure your spacing's right with things. Yeah. Versus being distracted by um, everything else going on. Mm -hmm. So now I can make sure, like, I'm trying to make sure that this inline is centered. How often do you build this like typography from scratch versus modifying a font? Does it vary? Mm, it varies based on the project and what I'm going for. I would say it's 50-50. Like if, if you have a short timeline, like it's sometimes it's funner to modify a font because um, then you have a better base. But I think because this is kind of so straightforward because I want it to feel really just clean. I'm hoping that it will be an easier one just to build. Yeah, and again, it's it is that a lot of these letters have highly similar elements. Yeah. Um, so again, just centering this. Hey, Basic Studio, uh, would love to know your actual name, or we could maybe that is your first and last name. But from from Mexico, wants us to design a mezcal brand. That's, That's also cool. fun. I think when I was on the phone preparing for this, they said that we recently did a mezcal brand. I don't know where um, who it was with, but. There might be one that you could rewatch. I'm so. into it. I do. I think out of a lot of the sort of the bottles out there, alcohol bottles, I think mezcal and tequila have fun bottles. Mm -hmm. They're like the most fun because totally. they'll dabble in like Day of the Dead and some of the, and just some fun colors and totally interesting shapes and stuff. So yeah. into it. Cool. So I don't know if you guys caught that. The I is just the H rotated, Love it. which is very convenient. Mm. Um, when it comes to the J, I wasn't sure if I wanted to add a top bar or not, so we'll probably draw it both ways. Um, I think if you add a top bar, it actually might get kind of tight where the bottom wraps back around. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Hugo, I don't know if you know who did the Mezcal brand. What, what uh, designer? I don't, I don't know who that was. Probably on vacation. I feel like I haven't been here for a little bit. Yeah. I was on, uh, you know, out saving the world. Oh, OC has to go to bed now. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. But we have somebody from Saudi Arabia. Wow, that's awesome. 
What time is it in Saudi Arabia? Just kind of curious. Has to be pretty late. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of bops? What, what's that? What kind of bops do you listen to when you're designing? That's Connor. Music. I know Connor. <laughs> I have a. <laughs> do you know that Connor? I do. I do oh. know that Connor. Connor. Connor yeah. Blackshirt. Yeah, and that's Taylin, my intern. Hi, Taylin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. He's saying bops because I have a playlist on Spotify called Lady Bops. <laughs> oh, I love it. That like is just literally every all of my Fun. favorite female pop songs from uh, like yeah. deep dives back to like elementary school, like through like last week I was still updating it. It's a good Lady playlist. Bops. Lady Bops. I love it. So yeah. <laughs> Thanks for chiming in, Connor. That's yeah, awesome. That I just like I just like calling music bops. I do too. I love bops. That is, it's a good word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lady Bops, a lot of like Taylor Swift and all sorts of things. I think I love Taylor Swift off of it. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> Which is maybe a controversial Katy Perry? choice. I don't Katy know. Katy Perry's on there. A lot of Carly Rae Jepsen. Robin's my favorite. Okay. Robin, interesting. Yeah. Um, that's good. And then a lot of deep dives. So we're I'm with uh, this J here. We're going to start the J over. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you're doing spot. pretty well, though. It was weird. I think what I'm going to do instead of trying to build the outlines, I'm going to build it as a stroke, and then just bulk it up until it okay. fe- fills this, up. This I want to see. I'm, I'm totally interested in how yeah. this plays out. Sometimes you <laughs> get down a road when you're doing custom lettering, and you're like, oh, that's no, not going to work. <laughs> Destiny Simmons loves Robin as well. So you got some. Robin's so good. Fans. Yeah. Lady Bob's playlist. Heather likes it. <laughs> I love I love people's like um, like their guilty their guilty pleasures totally like of everything and like especially music guilty pleasures yes so fun for sure um, I feel like after college a couple years ago I was noticing people were like, kind of mean about people liking like top forty pop music so I started trying to kind of just like own it yeah and being like. They're not like guess like, what? It's pop music like, for a reason. Exactly. People like it. Hey, yeah. don't don't try to be like, I'm too cool for Taylor Swift. Yeah, exactly. You know, or whatever. Yep, it's good for a reason. Okay, so unskinny bop bop. Derek's actually that's a song. Oh. Who sings that? Unskinny bop. That's a song. That um, okay. Music trivia. So we built this J outline. So now to get the stroke to what I want, I'm gonna drop in a guide. I know how you, I, I have a thought on how you should do this, Jay, by the way. Okay. That is probably no good, just joking. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump up the stroke till it touches this lines and hopefully it'll work better than what I was doing before. <laughs> just gonna bump it up forever. Cool. So I think that feels good to me. So obviously now yeah. it's going below the baseline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn it into an outline or expand it. Outline it like everything else. And then we'll just shorten it. So it's kind of weird, but it kind of okay, works. Okay, do sand, that's good. Offset path is another way to do it. Mm, offset that path works. for? To, to inst- just basically what you did. Yeah. It's- just Fine. a different, it's way, a different way. Yeah. Well, so I think I like that J with those guys. Um, what is, I don't know, what is my guilty music pleasure? Um, my guilty music pleasure? I don't know. Paco, what is it? You should probably know. Uh, Paco is actually also known as DJ Pac Man, who's our resident DJ right over here. <laughs> He's, he's spinning the tracks on the ones and twos that you're hearing, that electronic whatever music in the background, which is typically what I listen to when working. Yeah. Is that type of stuff. I liked, so with iTunes, you used to be able to see ha- like the song that you had have played the most. Oh my god, yeah. Which I, was always a good gauge to be like, what is that song? Yeah, I forget what mine was. Because I'm a big person where like a new song comes out and I love it and then I only listen to that song for a week. Yeah. Which I think people think is insane. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I um, that. like that Katy Perry song that just came out. Which one? Well, I don't even know. What is uh, it? I don't even know. 
Never Really Over. It's really good. And I'm not a huge Katy Perry fan, but I've only been listening to that song for like a week. So I'm sure that's like wow. very Just high up on the <laughs> list. Yeah. Ugh. So. Okay, cool. So I think I figured out the J finally. Woo. Good job, Derek. Poison sings Unskinny Bob. Baby metal, I'm into it. I'm into, like, there's hardcore. I'd be into, like, the softcore music. I'm into, yeah. like, the not hardcore stuff. The poppy metal and stuff. Like, yeah. Fall Out Boy. Like, I listen to Fall Out Boy. I love Fall Out Boy. Fun. Fall Out Boy was my jam in high school. Uh, and, of course, we are uh, big fans of Brand New in this studio. Mm -hmm. Do you know Brand New? I do. Yeah. And, uh... The War on Drugs is another popular one that we'll listen to after the stream. That's a good one. Mm. So again, I'm basing all these off of squares just to kind of get this like blocky thing going across. Um. I like how you're using, you're definitely using previous elements that you already had created. Mm -hmm. Types look, type will get screwed up if you're not, you know, if your sizes are off. It's just totally. gonna it's just gonna seem off. So Yeah. Um, so to get that end crossbar, it's just connecting the two corners. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Joelle loves brand new. Awesome. Well you're a friend of ours. So we <laughs> love brand new in the studio. Yeah. We have them on repeat constantly. Uh, so this is all just kind of like my first messy base layer. So obviously this is not great yet. Mm -hmm. And with this like point doesn't match with anything else we're doing. Yeah, it's so, like how do you, you know, manage that? Should it, you're gonna round it? What I'll probably do is... Can you show people how to round it? Yeah, I can. So if that's like the look you're going for, you could go through to your strokes panel and change the corner to a round. Boop. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah. I mean, you, I don't know what you, I mean, I that's better than the point, I feel. It's definitely better than the extended point, because that's weird. Um, two different ways I would fix this. So this diagonal's not exactly lining up even between these two oh, pieces either. Oh, that's the problem. So I would also sometimes add a second point on the okay. actual path. Oops. And maybe the mono line is kind of squared off like that, mm -hmm. and that's a way to get it centered. Uh, so that's a little bit better spacing now. Probably just confusing with my sketch behind it. So that feels a little bit better, so then you don't yes. get that super sharp point. Um, if you didn't want to add that super sharp point, what, you also, what I also do sometimes is say that this was perfectly spaced and you're still getting that point. Um, once you're, you're what do you say? No, no, go ahead. Um, so pretend this is perfect and like you're stuck with this sharp point anyways. When you're gonna make, a, when you're making a logo, you're eventually gonna expand it anyways. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll go through and. Chop it. Chop it. Cause I feel like most times when I'm making logos, there's like a level of like finessing detail that comes through afterwards. Like you're never gonna just outline something and be like, it's done, it's good. Mm -hmm. So that kind of fixes it too. But I think knowing how wide this is, I kind of like rouse out with the squaring off. Yeah, I liked, I liked how okay. you had that extra point in there. Yeah. There's something, oops, I already had it in there. Delete that one. Cause I feel like there's something about that that feels a bit more mechanical too. And I feel like this one's kind of like this strange, like a little bit more constructed feeling type. Yeah. Hey, jinx, we're almost there. We're almost to that bad letter though. <laughs> oh no, you're not looking forward to that. We're just gonna call it hijink. Oh no. <laughs> it's gone. You're like, I don't wanna do that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll figure it out. Um, I'll probably build it I similar would... to the J, where I do the outline and then hope that that works. I'm gonna like just try to find some fonts that are similar. Yeah, because that, that works sometimes too. If you find a similar font, you can put the S behind it, and then all you do is you follow like the general flow of it, and you just make it look like your type anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go to find more. 
yeah, I mean, I, I think I know how to fix the S. Because you, yeah. It's a toughy one. I'll try to find a font that has a line through it already. Mm. Actually, you know what? Uh, so, again, in, let's see. Okay, so this is good. I'm just gonna, while you do that, I'll switch yeah. to my computer. Uh, up, up. So again, just this is in Illustrator. None of the other apps have it, but basically I'm going into find more, and then I wanna filter. Probably since this is a decorative font, I could go into decorative. Swashes, distressed, irregular, that's where it might be. Ooh, there's already like, that's kind of fun. Like there's that. I saw that one earlier, I like that one. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Um, oh, here's a uh, serif version. But anyway, so just kind of showing you this. Ooh, here's, here's another one, Aria. And then what I'm doing, since I did find more, I can go ahead and activate it and bring it in. So here's another one. Oh. Sometimes I'll favorite them, like the ones that I'm downloading, and then I'll, of course, appear my favorites. But anyways, this is where time, you start to lose track of time, I feel, as soon as you dive into uh, looking at fonts. <laughs> Yes. Like hours go by and you're like, what, ha what happened to my time? Oh yeah, I was yeah. like looking at some fonts. Yes. <clears throat> How my gross cane is going. Oh, that's fun too. Okay. Welcome, I want to welcome Heather and uh, Gary and everyone. Let us know if you have questions. We're diving into some more complex letters, I feel. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> right? We were rocking and rolling. I think the, the H and the, the H I. The H and the I is so easy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and this is where, like, normally if I'm being good and I'm not switching concepts because I want to show you guys how we do this. <laughs> this is also where I'd usually be like, I'll come back to that later. Let's move on to and the there's fun more, part. <laughs> there, yeah. No, there's, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I mean, I, that's what I love about it to be live. I like it when people, yeah. like, you're really, you're really working. You're really, like, people really, like, screwing up things and, yeah. and get, finding, getting themselves in a jam and working their way out of it yeah. is always, like, super fun to see. Yeah. Uh, this might be one where we do it in that second point again. Oh, Meredith, I'm sorry you're having that problem with activating fonts. I don't know why. Oh. I don't know why it's not activating in Illustrator. But That's usually weird. when I activate them, I favorite them. So then I'll go to my favorites menu just so I can find them. I think half the time, it's not only finding the right font, but remember what that font name is. So I'm like, what is that? What do they call that crazy thing? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I never remember. Yeah. I'll leave that key like that for now. I don't think it's great. Um, this guy. We're on to the bad one. I know. I'm trying to, like, oh, here's another That's one. That's a good one. So. What's that one called? Just kind of looking at uh, some of these fonts. We have this one and properties panel. Uh, phosphate is the top one. Okay. I might grab that one. I'm going to take a stab at doing it once. But if I can't do it, I like the idea of taking phosphate as a base. And then you can kind of half trace it, half add your own shape to it. And then mm. you have the proportions of the S, right? Yeah. I feel like when I first started, I always thought that was cheating, but it's like, no, it's, it's just a solid reference point. If you're tracing mm -hmm. that exactly and passing it off as your own, that's a problem. Yeah, that is a problem. But if you put it underneath and you're just like, this is a good guide, I use Gotham for that, like nonstop, um, just to kind of get at Cause it's a, what the shape is. Because yeah. it's just a tough letter. Because I do custom lettering, but I'm not a typographer. Like, I think like there's definitely rules I break because I'm approaching it from a branding perspective. I'm not... Well... Yeah. You know, it's type is it has one job. It's just to convey information. You're just supposed yeah. to be able to read it. Yeah. So I think as long as you can. S oh, let me switch to yours. There we go. Sorry about that. Oh my bad. There we go. You could read. So, I read that as an S. It's done. Hey, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Thanks everyone. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it on the first try. No, I just try to like block off that first ch crappy one. <laughs> kind of hope it works. Um. 
Uh, I don't know if you can talk about this, but Kerwin's asking about like working for a large company versus you know, your freelance clients. That's super fascinating. It's really different. I think I can talk about it in terms of like, generally General. speaking, how different it is. Because yeah, totally. I think even when you compare like, freelancing or corporate to a like small studio or an ad agency, like I think everything has its own culture. That's actually pretty good. That is looking freaking good. We're gonna try the stroke thing that we do with the J now. Oh yeah. Um, I'd say when you work at a small company or by yourself, you're wearing a lot of hats. When you work at a corporation, depending on what that corporation is, you're a specialist. I'm really proud of that S. I'm really, I think we're done. I, I'm really <laughs> impressed too, wow. Oof. Maybe I just need to talk more while I design and then I don't get in my head about it. <laughs> it's not perfect everyone, but it's close. <laughs> I like that you work, you know, you work at Target and I think it working in a, a at a big corporation yeah. helps you understand how big corporations work. So when yes. you're dealing with them on a freelancer basis, like you yeah. you totally get, you get the nuance that there's more. like all these layers of management and all these things that you have and like you totally. need to understand how things work. Yeah. I, I I I encourage everybody should have a corporate job and then freelance and find what fits for yeah. you, but it's mm -hmm. I mean there's both are awesome. Totally. And you have the best of both worlds, because, you know. Totally. And it's funny inside. because um, I always say, like, when you, if you want to work somewhere corporate, like, make sure it's for a company you love, because mm -hmm. it's hard to work corporate for something if you aren't in love with the product, because you have to live and breathe that product every day, versus if yeah. you work at an agency, you're switching between different clients a lot. Yeah. So. That's true. Uh, yeah, Chris, I was thinking the same thing. Chris said you would use circles for the S. But I think you nailed it already. Like so yeah. far, you're on the total right yeah. track. You can use circles for an S. The problem is, is like that top and the bottom balance is slightly different. Like the top curve is tighter and the bottom curve is more open. Mm -hmm. And with a circle, it's hard to get to that. You, you keep doing your thing. Like Ariana says, that came out great. Thanks. It's this kind of there. good. Did you know you can add you can add multiple strokes onto a line? You know that? Really? Can I show you? Yeah. Because it's amazing. How do you do that? So um, go to your appearance panel. Uh, boop. And do the fly out menu. Add new stroke. Oh. And then increase the size. Go to the stroke beneath because it's stacked. But go to okay. this one. And maybe change the color and make it make it bigger. So as like the ins one inside one can be white, the outside one can be black or whatever. But just to kind of show you. Okay, so we'll change the inside one to white. Hmm. Am I changing the other one? Mm. Oh, do you have it even selected? <laughs> I have it selected. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what happened to it? Okay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Add That's new stroke. Funny. It's like, why is nothing changing? That's so odd. Yeah. So it's the one that's and higher up higher. Yeah, okay. exactly. So Just change like that top one to white. Cool. I didn't know you could do this. Yeah. That's really bum. So. Yeah. So and this is really good. Like any because you pick a script font. You know how script yeah. fonts. You want to stroke a script font and yeah. it doesn't come out right. It's yeah. just good to, I can show you endless yeah. tutorials on this stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I'd say I want to move on to other stuff because I want to show how to do different things. But yeah. what I would do from here is I probably would make another layer on top of it and draw an actual outline version of it. So then mm. that way you can clean up some of these really awkward areas and yeah. where it's like a weird point that's generating. Mm -hmm. So I'll use that stroke tool similar to how I use like my sketches. Oh, and interesting. And I'll trace it afterwards. Okay. So but let's move on to something else because that was a lot of type building. <laughs> so. No, I like um, it. So. But with that appearance panel, you can have multiple strokes, multiple really cool. fills as well. That's like so cool. many things. I didn't know you could do that. That's really nice for inlines, honestly, because inline type is like the hardest stuff to do because you get into weird spots like this where like if this was, I keep trying to point to my screen. Mm -hmm. If you added lines here and drew this as a stroke, then you could add the inline and then you would know exactly where it went mm -hmm. versus having to guess like where these little special points go and stuff like that. So. Into it. Cool. All right, um, let's move on to maybe this one, another hijinks one. How, where's the poll at? Is hijinks still winning by a landslide? Yeah, I'll, I'll check it again, but it, let me try to refresh this. 
Yeah. The hijinks. Looks like our um, hijinks is winning. Winner. Looks like pretty much our winner is hijinks. Yeah. You know, almost Fine. forty votes, like by double. Yeah. But again, it's your, yeah. it's your stream. And it's a fake client, though. <coughs> we can do whatever we want. Um, working in white, which isn't helpful. Uh, over here and pick up that guy. So this is another similar kind of layout with an illustration that I would compare back to this one. The difference here is I think this one I would want to do a hand-drawn illustration, and over here we're going to try doing something that's more vector-based to kind of get it like a juniper berry, like laurel, because um, juniper is what you flavor gin with. Um, so to type on the path again to kind of get hijinks in there. Um, okay, good. Juniper yeah. berries. Juniper's cute. It kind of looks like pine and blueberries. It totally does. That's exactly yeah. right. So it's like a fun one to make little illustrations for. So I'll yeah. probably pull some of those references when we start working on stuff. Yeah. Well, I had no idea. Like, I wonder what they taste like. Yeah. So let's pick up. I think that's this like more heavy sands one for over here, but it might not be friendly enough. It kind of feels a little bit sporty or something. Yeah, I don't like that. Are you kind of think also kind of thinking in the back of your head about color? Yeah, I want to touch on that eventually because I think like this, you don't get like the full vibe of it until you get the color going. Yeah. So that's what I was just thinking. blocking stuff out. Um. Let's try to get this one done quickly, and then we can start playing with color cool. then, too. And just so you know, uh, we have that uh, design challenge going on, about uh, less than, well, about 12 minutes. We'll be reviewing those designs. Um, Rita just asked, what's the logo for? It's not for a Jake, fake gin brand. <laughs> gin <laughs> brand, not gin brand. Try, yeah, um, try gin. Gin. Um, not a real client, so that means we get to do what we want, which is why we're doing a poll on the name. So, hmm. just kind of jumping in and checking out. Yeah, hello, uh, hola, well, if I'm saying your name correctly, yes, this is will be available on demand as soon as we are done. You can check the replays tab, um, but just hang out with us. Hmm. Hang out. I'm liking this Sophia Pro typeface because I think it feels friendly. Don't like the J, mm -hmm. so I probably will change that. Yeah, I was um, gonna say that's gonna be a problem. Wacko. Um, get really big, and I'll probably modify it a little bit and make the corners more rounded because I want this to oh, feel that's good. friendly without um, taking away from the legibility of it. So I think we can start tweaking that right now. I'm gonna yeah. drop the sketch away. Boom, I think you're gonna do that. Yeah, always duplicate it <laughs> so you don't lose your arch. Um, I just love looking at people's Illustrator files because they're yeah. a mess, right? Yeah, let's I mean, that's okay. They just get, it. They get messy. Bad. And notice I'm not even working on a page. Like no. once I want to show concepts, I'll start pulling them on the page, but for now I'm literally just working in all the side stuff. Sometimes I'll even, you can even turn off that artboard outline. Oh really? Yeah. How do you do that? View, I think. Uh, hide artboards. Oh, so then so you like you're really like, like open I don't, space. I don't even care. I'm not matter. working on a page. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, so let's modify some of these. So oh yeah, and group them. And then what I'll do is I'll go through and try to figure out like what corner radius I like. I'll usually do a different corner radius for the outer corners versus the inner corners. So let's just select the outer corners. Yeah, using the correct selection tool. Yeah. Mariana's working on a logo too. This is very helpful, she says. Well, cool. we're so happy. Great. Happy Rodrigo wants to know what it's for. It's fake gym brand. 
people are just supporting us. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Um, so I selected all the corners separately, and now I'll just play around with like what feels good. You could make a totally roundy boy, but I think I like it a little bit better when it just feels like this, like point one. So just mm -hmm. a little bit softer. Yeah. Um, and I'll pull these guys too. Just a little bit less. That looks actually a little bit more. It's hard to tell from far away, but I, I promise like it feels better. <laughs> <laughs> So. That's one of those things you you change as a designer that nobody else is going to Yeah, where I'm like, oh, look how much better that feels. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Mm. And that's nice that like, it shows you like the R, not the radius number as you're going. So you don't have to, like, I always just kind of make sure it's around the one. So this guy, I'm just going to select the bottom half of it and see what it feels like to kind of pull him up into. Yeah line with his friends. So it works, but oh. then my spacing's kind of off. Yeah, just kind of just uh, a little bit. So I think it works. If we had more time, I probably would make it more of the, just to use my blob brush to show this. I could probably make him a full J. Ooh. Which I think would be fun, but I don't want to. Mm -hmm. That's a detail to get into later. Exactly. So I just want to get to a point where we're happy with the mark right now so we can start playing around with color and talking about how that could make it feel. Chris wants to know how you, how you get those little control points on the inside. Yeah. So if you have the direct select arrow, which is the white arrow, which is just A, mm -hmm. um, drag and select those, and then you should get little dots. Yeah. So I use and that tool can, a lot. You can actually change it from just a rounded corner to a chamfer yeah. corner and all sorts of things. Where are those? Uh, should be in your options bar. If you yeah. select the points. Well, maybe it's down there somewhere. I thought it was. I've seen it before, but yeah, you can change it to different. Like you can make it so the corners just like angle off, yeah. which is nice for like kind of more vintagey looking type. Um, so I'd especially recommend only doing outline corners on letters like N, because if you do that same radius that you're doing on the outside on the inside here, you're gonna pull it in it's gonna block it in more, so you're gonna to wanna to do a more small okay. radius just so you don't yeah, lose the legibility on that character. Yeah. yeah. Same with like a K. So anytime when you get to like those really tight corners, you don't want to be doing the whole thing at once. Yeah, anytime so, there's that sharp corner, cause even... Even this one was kind of Exactly, that's what iffy. I was thinking. I might go back and tweak that guy. Yeah, cause see, I don't like how I don't like any of how any of those three turned out. Luckily, you can always go back and edit them. So, I'll make it even less. Yeah, I like it. Well. Get your designs in. Love to see. Well, so here are the two side by side. So, left is what we modified, and right is where it was. So it's not crazy different, but I do feel like you can feel the softness of those yeah. characters more, whereas here it feels really sharp. So mm. I think we're gonna keep that one. So we'll keep that guy. Um, and now let's add in some secondary type to kind of close up the mark, and then we'll add the um, icon in the middle. Oops, that's too big. Hijinx is a perfect name. If the, I just pulled this up, dictionary. Prydictionary.com. Boisterous fun is what mm -hmm. hijinks means. That's like sounds like a good time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just thought I lost everything and then I realized I should save it. So make sure you're saving your files as you go. <laughs> that would have been bad. Ah, so sorry. <laughs> We're gonna save that. <laughs> it's like, where did it go? Um, here we go. So I, these are just some fonts I've installed on my own that I'll probably play around with. Um, I was wondering what value serif might look like here. So it's a little bit more of a vintage feeling serif. And I was also gonna try this Averia, which again, like more of a vintage serif that's a little bit more blobbed in. And that's a technical term. I like that. I like the rounded corners because it kind yeah. of kind of matches and mm -hmm. yeah, it's nice. 
down. Um, let's try that. So not two, I mean, there are different typefaces, but this one's like more, it feels like it's been run through like a letterpress or something, and this one's just a little bit cleaner, which I think is gonna work better with what we're doing. I'm gonna show people the corners real fast yeah, since everybody's it. interested. Um, so just drew a shape, right, as you can see here. Once you have that drawn, I currently just have, you know, all the corners selected, but right up here in the, this is where I usually go. Mm -hmm. uh, options bar, corners, and here you can see the chamfered, and then the chamfered, and then the inverted round, uh, and obviously. There's even different types of rounding. This is interesting. Absolute versus relative. I wonder if that would solve that problem. With, yeah. Huh. Interesting. But anyways, you can see the obvious. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that angle one is nice, because that's something that can take a lot of time if you're going through and like chopping your letters to get that look to be able to round them off yeah. with that exact function is nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just try this really fast. Uh, let's go with Helvetica, clear all that, boop. Cause this is exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Relative, Ab, there's, so it doesn't okay, just so a here's, bit. yeah, it's those points that, yeah, it's like pretty much kind of what you were doing, but yeah, you were actually, yeah, the way you made it look was, was even better. Great. You did it even better. Um, barrel crafted, dry gin. So again, not a real project, so we're just making words up. Um. It might be too old feeling. We might want to do something that's a little bit newer. I like Adele Ooh. a lot. Yeah. So this one, I think, because it's a little bit that's taller, nice. it feels a little bit more friendly while still kind of having that like old school vibe I was going for. Um, I'm into it. Yeah, so let's regroup this. Are there different weights? Yes, good. <laughs> so. Yeah, so now we have a nice little spot here to work on like a little illustration guy. Less than two minutes to get your designs in that we will review shortly. So check out the challenge tab. We are working on um, metallic neon effect designs, back to the future style. So this is my little icon I started kind of working on. So now here we'll pull up a reference point for juniper berries. So the juniper is like the main herb used to flavor gin. So it's really cute, thankfully. Mm -hmm. So we'll just Love it. take this into Illustrator so we kind of have a reference point. Obviously we're not tracing and the style will be very different. But I think it's nice to kind of have something in there versus switching back and forth. Totally. Um, Fortune A wants to know what font this is. It's called Adele PE. I think it's an Adobe font. Yes, it is. So, yeah. Very nice. Cool. So knowing that's kind of got these blue berries and like these, a mix between like pine and thyme, I feel like, um, we'll just build a little mark based off of that. Into it. Oh, this is gonna be curious how you build the, the little... Uh, sprigs. Sprigs, yeah. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it just yet. Um, so I think these are good for the center berries. I think what I'll do is I'll lock them into place and I'll probably draw this whole thing over it and then cut it out. Okay. So let's take, connect that. Oh, Wilton's asking about my questionnaire, which that's a good question. So the, the questionnaire that I showed at the beginning of the stream, like wondering if I charge for that part of that brief. So I do, I consider that part of it. Like I would never build that creative questionnaire without actually having a really, like a contract with the client. I wouldn't do that part free and be like, this is what I would do. So. Yeah, that's always interesting, like what? 
like how far guess, is too far for discovery? Yeah, kind of exactly. Thing? And yeah. it depends on the client because if it's a if it's a potentially like super big gig, you might they might want you to do some of that stuff. I think yeah. that it wouldn't be completely out of line though, like to ask like, is there a fee for this because this goes beyond just pricing and project scope identification. Mm. Um, so there are ways that you can build this like sprig that feel um, like geometrically perfect, but I kind of want this to feel like it was geometric, but still kind of handcrafted. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop it so it doesn't actually overlap. Actually, first I'm gonna duplicate it, or group it. Yeah. Group it. Make um, it copy somewhere. Copy it mm -hmm. and reflect it so I just have the identical one going the other way. And I was trying to line up this like line right here directly in the middle. There's a little mark. So now I'll chop it just by eyeballing it to see what I think feels right. Oops. Hold on. Yeah. So there's our little Sprig icon, which is pretty good for a first pass. Um, and then what I'll do is, cause again, like I want it to kind of feel like it's handcrafted. Maybe it's a stamp that's carved into something, but obviously I don't have a stamp maker here. Um, we're going to outline everything and group it and then mess with some of the thicks and thins to kind of make it look um, hand carved. So what I'll do is I'll go through here so Sam, just so you know, we have Ashley today and tomorrow. So we're gonna get this done in two days. Yeah, so tomorrow we'll, I'll come in with some fin a finished logo and some sketches for packaging, and I'll make mm. sure in the beginning that we can talk about how I got to the finished logo versus um, just like being like, surprise, it's done. <laughs> None of you get to see what it is. So, so rounding off again some of these corners inside of here, I think is gonna get it a more um, friendly look. You could also, like knowing that the little juniper, kind of like they come to peaks, you can go through and thin, like hand select these corners and make them a little bit thinner at the tip. That's feeling pretty good. Yeah, it's very nice. And even though I've already mirrored this guy over here, I'll probably still just duplicate it again. I do a lot of back and forth duplicating because a lot of my stuff I do is symmetrical. So instead of going through and hand tweaking the other one, I'll just replace it again. So, <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. So let's just round these last two and then we can play with color. Into it. And we'll also, mm -hmm. we can review some, uh, give some design feedback. We don't, yeah. we don't have many, but the few that we have, we'll go ahead and uh, review. Just so you know, that sounds whenever, good. whenever you're at a stopping point. Yeah, why don't we review for right now? It's looking really good though, by the way. I really like it. That's actually before we jump off completely. Yeah, let's take a look at that. It's feeling line. pretty good. I think there's things I would tweak about it for sure, but I think for like a first pass, um, I try to be forgiving with myself versus like immediately be like, ooh, a lot of stuff I'd change. I think it feels mm. good. I think we have a couple um, cool options for logos here. Mm -hmm. So again, like in here, I think we would do like a hand illustrated one. Yeah. So, yeah. Very cool. cool. Well, awesome. Oh, actually, that is amazing. And just so you know what we're working on, we're doing this, reviewing this design challenge. So we invite you to share your Photoshop uh, design with us. It's back to the future inspired image with metallic neon effects. Yeah. And then we were working on smart objects. Um, so join the community, of course, the Discord, which is what I'm looking at. And this is where the community really comes to life, which is cool. nice, sort of continue the conversation even beyond these streams. Yeah. It all like happens here. So just so you know, I'm reviewing the design feedback right in here. It's uh, Voodoo Val was kind enough to uh, present. Nice. Uh, this daily challenge, and you can see uh, Bartimaeus, which I'm gonna give Bartimaeus the uh, Heart eyes, that looks amazing. Yeah, that's cool. Those yeah. like intense highlights. <laughs> I love the intense highlights. Yeah. And again, that's just like um, 
and added layer and probably played with the blend modes there. Mm -hmm. Totally. I know it works really cool. well. Yeah. Huh, good background. Excellent job. Excellent. Bartimaeus. Ken, let's take a look. Ooh, that's fun, Ken. Mm -hmm. little, little There's reflection. a little reflection in there, too. Yeah. That's so cool. Nice. It would be cool if you could find a way to work color into that, because kind of like you see all the mm -hmm. color of the lights on the strip. Like, is there a way to get like other hints of color besides just gold in the type? That would yeah. be fun. Yeah, and the best thing you could do, if, you, if you're if you feeling like a little lost or if something is not right, just like you're doing with juniper berries, go back to your reference. Like, what does chrome sure. look like yeah. in these settings? And it's just studying from real life is like the best thing you can yeah. do. But that's looking really cool. I love it. Boom. Uh, fantastic. That that might be it for the um, yeah daily challenge. They might have already reviewed these yesterday, but here's some Stranger Things text that they were mm, working on that's yesterday. That's fun to work on. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I'm excited for what season three. Of I haven't Things. watched the preview yet, but I really liked the first two seasons. Yeah, I haven't watched it either. Yeah, it's crazy seeing how much all those kids have grown up. That's like the fun thing about shows with kids is yeah, how the much age. they grow up. Yeah. I know. <laughs> cool. Uh, that one's fun. Oh, fantastic! Cool. Um, so continue to submit yours. We'll be on. In Discord, by the way, just kind of reviewing the various designs that come through. Uh, also, with our next guest, we'll be doing that as well. Just so you know, because um, yeah, we have about fifteen minutes or so. Cool. Um, so I thought what we could do here is right. start playing with color. Obviously, right now we're still in black and white mode, but. Um, Typically, I would get these a little bit further feeling finished before I jump super into color, but I think it'd be fun to look at today and talk about that. Um, so I actually do usually pull my mood board in when I start playing with color, because I think it's really hard to come up with color from scratch, and I actually get a lot of emails from people asking how I come up with my colors, and yeah. it's usually that I'm eyedroppering it, because mm -hmm. other people are really good with color. Um, I never would like exactly pick something up identically, but like to get like the tones to get something started, I'll always eyedropper. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I notice even when even when somebody does try to actually copy something directly, it never ends up exactly like how it was. Because no. first of all, like what fun is that anyway? You know. Totally. Uh, but I'm into see. this. So again, like I think like taking something that feels maybe a little bit vintage and starting to play with bright colors with it can be really interesting. So I'll take the eyedropper color and then start tweaking. Like I want that to feel a little bit more yellow. Kind of bright and citrusy. Um, I like the blue because again, like that juniper berry is blue, but maybe it goes into like that really trendy, like royal blue that's happening everywhere right now. Like that could be. You're interesting. onto the trends, huh? Like I didn't know if there was this royal blue trend happening. I love royal blue yeah. so much right now, and I feel like it's a thing. Um, sorry. You're fine. Um, yeah, so we can look at a couple that are just straight up. Oops. Two color explorations, and then I know that this was one that I initially wrote in my notes that I wanted to play with what if the typography was a couple different colors. Mm -hmm. So maybe this goes to, um, this pink is really nice. She reads as orange. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Bright pink paired with like a pale pink, that's nice. Kevin Worth's wondering if you thought of changing the J and hijinks to a G. I have. And I think that's clever, but I also, personally, I don't like puns. All I kind right. of like when the pun is worked into the, like I like that there's the gin sound in hijinks, yeah. but I don't want to make it like totally hitting you over the head with it. So Good. I thought the J was kind of like a little bit more subtle, even though we all subtle. obviously recognize it. Mm -hmm. I like I like, I like, like what you're thinking though, Kevin, that's like, Totally. A good idea. And I think that's why I liked the word hijinks, honestly, because it oh, has that okay. gin sound, but I think the G part just makes it like really there. Mm -hmm. So let's 
Yeah, and it's it's fun when you do change when you make up a new word. Chances are that's going to be available across like social media and all that stuff. Like that's oh the my god, good, totally. Yeah. Good thing so about. maybe for if we had a real client, they would want that because then it does make it truly more ownable mm -hmm. and something that people recognize. So, yeah. So I'm actually really liking adding color to this one. It's kind of wild to me. Like, I love all of these. It's really nice. I love all, like I want to use all the like all the use all these colors, yeah. please. Like it's they so all look. Fun. This green I like is this fantastic. Pink really well. Um, That's cool. They're all just so nice. Yeah, I think like what's funny to me is like when I was looking at it in black and white, I was kind of still beating myself up in my head like, oh, I don't know, like not great yet. But then the second you add color to it, it starts to come to life a little bit better which is really nice. Um, so I think this is a good two color exploration board, but like, let's go crazy. Let's go crazy. Um, Love it. When I and by the way, we do like pun. You, uh, you we like puns. Every... I didn't mean to roast you, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> but like, that's also chat's job is yeah. to be the Yeah, the you guys can come after me for puns. that banner of puns. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we love puns, we do. I believe it. But it's also like when to use it and when to not. Totally. Like I like you, what you said, you don't want to hit somebody over the head with yeah. something like, yeah. You know, it's better subtle. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you know what? Actually, be not, are you doing, oh, you're changing color? Okay, good. Yeah. Do your thing. Yeah. So let's just go a little bit wild. So, like, <coughs> actually incorporating more of that actual juniper color, which I think is a little bit more neutral. A good way, honestly, for me that I get to my vibrant colors, because I feel like I have a hard time picking them out here. Mm -hmm. is I'll actually go into here, and I, this is a better visualization tool for me to get to like that vibrant color that I want. But yeah. let's do... Do you I'm ever use do recolor? Do you ever use recolor artwork? In I haven't area? figured that out yet. Can we? Can I show you? Because it'll yeah. be really fun. As soon as you get something Let's do it with going, one of these top ones. Okay. Let's and do pick it. A, pick a couple colors, you know. So how do I start it? Just select both elements, like... This Everything. Canvas. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now go to edit. Yep. Uh, edit colors and recolor artwork. Now, Ooh. so these are the two colors. You can also yeah. click to the edit, the edit tab there. Boop. And now oh. hit, lock it down. By the way, is one thing I do. Lock it, and those links links them together. Now we're just rotate it around, mm. and you can okay, just okay. Yeah, I love kind of get some. That's cool because then you can go. You can take it in and out too. Yeah, and since they're linked together, it keeps that same uh, oh, saturation like that or brightness. Okay, yeah, I'm else. obsessed. So it's super with fun. This. Right? Oh, I like that a lot. I'm just gonna. Save That's that good one. too. Yeah. I like that one. So because I duplicate Ooh, that one, I'm gonna pull it. this one off to the side so I don't lose it. Okay. I want to try that on this wild thing. <laughs> Once we get there. Yeah. So I'm it's see what super fun to. Um, I'm just gonna put a rainbow and even if I don't think it's the right thing for the brand because I just wanna see how it kind of turns out when you're playing with those mm -hmm. colors. We'll add back on the red. Mm. That's a good, Lucia brings up a good point. Just talking about blue and yellow together makes you, reminds her of Ikea. But it's yeah. good to think about that stuff because like those brands are out there. And oh my like, God, totally. Yeah. Ideally, like, and there's a couple of different ways we do it. We're playing with lots of colors, but I love brands that have been able to, like, own a color, which totally. is hard to do, or even a combo. Like, yeah. that combo, they own that combo now. Oh, my God, yeah, kinda... it's it's an equity to them. Yeah. Okay, I'm excited to do this. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> love it. I'm going to use this tool all the time. You should. You oh, should. that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so I like to do this thing that I call twisted primary colors, which is like I'll do like a pure red, yellow, and blue, but then I slightly twist it so it doesn't feel so primary. Okay. And I feel like this is a good way to do that because you could literally mm -hmm. set those colors and then just, oops, I messed it up. But you could just twist it and then you get just like a slightly different rainbow. Oh, that's fun. So oh, Marina, thank that. you for joining us, by the way. This is a, a personal project, um, creating gin. A gin logo. Yeah. Branding, just yes. so you know. Um, and then Miguel's asking the inspiration for the middle graphic. So that is actually juniper, which is the main herb that flavors gin. So that's really fun. Um, let's do a, like, a, still swapping the colors, but more nuanced. So that we can still kind of use a color in the background. So we could go to like a bright yellow maybe. Not 
like multiplying or something. Oh yeah, it looks like it is. Uh, what's happening? How did I do that? There we go. There we are. Um, so we'll change these yellows to something that matches tonally. Uh, Derek, since they're RGB colors, do they does it convert to your CMYK doc? Are you using RGB? You're, you're not using really. CMYK. You, you're using CMYK, yeah. I do switch back and forth sometimes. I am in CMYK color mode, so yeah. I'm up here, and then I'm picking CMYK over here. I will say that, like when you get into the edit colors and recolor artwork, it's really good if you do. It helps you pare down colors because it gets to be important. I just start picking colors, like the printing and all that stuff. Like, do you mm -hmm. have 15 different colors? Maybe you only want to make sure all your reds match perfectly. Totally. You can pare it down that way in well, edit really colors. Nice. It's so nice. That's nice, especially if you're like working with a freelance client that you're in charge of figuring out production ready files, that you can mm -hmm. like make sure that everything's in the right place. I really like this. I like what you're doing here. Yeah. Boy, that's pretty subtle. That's cool. So I feel like stuff like that, like a good way to get your client to do something fun without being like, it's a whole rainbow. Mm -hmm. You ready yeah. for this? That is very rainbowy. <laughs> so, yeah. I love it. Just so you know, we have uh, Melissa Gutierrez up at, uh, well, that, that's at noon. We also have XD Daily Creative Challenge happening in about 10, 10 15 minutes as well. So, full day planned. Uh, super fun having Ashley here. I this like that green. Fun. Yeah, it's not super legible against the blue, so mm -hmm. I'm just gonna drop the tone of it. Just so it's more legible. When you when you're thinking about this like as a label, like are you yeah. thinking that blue the, the the light blue will be actually on the label? Totally. So it could either be that or is the light blue a holding shape that the logo goes inside of? So if you wanted your label to be something else, like could you ever is it a little flag that it sits inside of? Mm -hmm. So that could be that too. So I think there's a lot of different ways to like deploy a background color. Oh, look at that. Little flag. That's nice That's too. actually really cute. Yeah. There's something about this that feels really like Scandinavian, which I kind yeah. of like. Uh -huh. um, I kind of wanted to try the subtle color shift here too. But I feel like it's... It's kind of distracting on all the tall letters to have them be different. So maybe we'll try the opposite. Maybe I'll go with more purple. Yeah, that feels good. That's nice. That's subtle. Yeah, and you can always like incorporate like a little another. Ooh, you can make. You could do more accents here. Oh, okay. Just to add some emphasis to like the product type. Mm-hmm. I love these little these little tips, these little things like those little. I feel like these are the things dots. that make a logo feel more like thoughtful and like a story versus just like here it is, mm -hmm. here's the type. So. And and sometimes things just need to be grounded or encapsulated or something like that. Totally. So you add these elements to like, yeah. yeah, make it makes it look more finished. Something fun you can maybe do here to get a little bit of form is could you do that contrasting color? on half the berry. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If it's a high, it's a drop shadow or a, like yeah. maybe it follows that curve or yeah. something. Um, I don't know. You're the designer. There's a couple different things you could do to kind of make it feel. Kind of interesting. Uh, wild film, yeah, that's a good question as well. Like could you do these logos in Photoshop? Yeah. You technically could. I don't love the type tools in Photoshop. I will say I use Photoshop and logos if I'm doing hand-drawn elements. Mm -hmm. um, and I do use Live Trace to get into Vector because I think that you're, most of the time your client needs something that can scale and like yeah. a raster file won't be able to scale infinitely versus this you could scale up to use a, um, on like a billboard or something mm -hmm. super tiny too. So I think like if you're gonna use Photoshop for logos, you have to be really careful with where you it's being do. used. For sure. Yeah. I, I do feel like everything starts in Illustrator. Totally. It starts in Vector, Illustrator, and then it, and then it's like, hey, other apps, take care of it. Go, yeah. Go figure out how this Go make it there. animated in After Effects and go, exactly. go add your cool st stuff in Photoshop or whatever, or like yeah. whatever you need to do. Uh -huh. I'm doing like more of a moody one now. Just kind of fun too. I'm really liking this logo. It's making me like hijinks better because I was definitely team jamboree. <laughs> 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 then all of you made me think differently. <laughs> 
I really like these colors. This is making yeah. me happy. Color can be tough, but I think it can be tough. Like the, I love the, all these colors as a as a like as a unit. I like all this stuff. Yeah. I mean that just all kind of works. Totally. Yeah. Um. Does anyone have color suggestions or things they want to see? Yeah. Any any other ideas? Again, we're a we're a team here. We're a team. Love to love to hear from you if you have any other suggestions. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I did want to try roughening this logo a little up a little bit. So using just to kind of make it feel maybe even more hand drawn. Like could mm -hmm. we? Let's just take that type. looks wild, but if you drop the settings low enough, you can kind of get to a place. We have, uh, I do want to show two more. Oh, we do? Designs, too. Let's do that, because I'm not getting anywhere here. You got it. All right, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Yeah. Again, want to want to highlight you as a community. Appreciate you. This is in Discord. You can check out the challenge tab, but design feedback. Guardians, again, this is from, sorry about that, Gerard. Cool. That's a spooky looking person. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a little witch. But I love how like organic these highlights are. Yeah, it's, it's super organic. I like that's picking up so much color from the background because I think those chrome kind of like Back to the Future graphics work best when it's really absorbing everything yeah. from the space around yeah. it. Yeah, good job, and um, it, it does kind of blend into the background, which is good, because you have this big fat type that's huge. Yeah. It, it's a good use of the yeah. color. So Gerard, you are fantastic. Let's throw a little, hey buddy. Xanadu, Ant. This is from Ant. Cool. Ooh. Cool. Xanadu, that's, that's, that is fun. Very much Pride Month. For sure. Look to it. Yeah. <laughs> into it, or, or 80s, I technically were doing Back to the Future, kind of like mm -hmm. Back to the 80s, kind of super fun. Yeah. Love it. Cool. Great, and good job using like appropriate fonts and stuff. For you sure. you don't want to use like a serif font. No, or something like super stately and then throw it in Chrome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. So these, on this, on that note, these are a Derek, by the way, in Photoshop. By yeah, I think that makes sense when you're doing that many different effects on um, lettering. Like you, like you wouldn't be able to get like that, like more natural photo-like effect in Illustrator without probably slowing your program down way too much. Um, I saw somebody suggest desert colors and like a gray. So I think we should try those because I do jump into Rainbow Chrome nonstop, but I think like a more refined palette would work really well here too. So if we went into like warm neutrals. So there. Which looks cool. And then you could do kind of like a muted blue for the juniper. That looks nice too. Mm. That's cool. Man. That gives it a whole different vibe. Because now it kind of feels like I just love everything you're doing. It's fun. It does look, it, it has a more, obviously, like, earthy. Yeah. It doesn't, like, I mean, again, it kind of goes back to your, your mood board and everything, all those words mm -hmm. about, you know, what, Yeah. those are kind of guiding your color yeah. choices you as well. You can actually revisit that and see, because I think that's a good thing, too. Like, you don't just make the mood board and walk away from it. You should always mm -hmm. go back to it as, like, a proof point. So, like, colorful, colorful handcrafted, handcrafted, playful. playful. Yeah. So I think it's delivering, I think the colorful ones obviously deliver on all three a little bit better, mm -hmm. but I do think this still feels playful and handcrafted. I think so too. It, yeah. it definitely says like, kind of like more handcrafted. Yeah. So I guess each design is playing up different words. Totally. Which I think like okay. it's good to deliver that range to your client, yeah. you know, because I think sometimes the client might say, I really want something that's minimal and refined, but they don't know exactly what they want. So it's good to kind of test them on that and show, throw them like the one of like, hey, this one's more refined. Like, do you think that's what you really want? Yeah, um, and I'm, I like the your your questionnaire you did put in there. Like, is there any colors or things that you don't like? Yes. Because again, people, it's very personal. It's so good. Yeah. Well played. Because you don't know if a color means something to them in their yes. life for whatever reason. 
Well, we're kind of coming down to the end. Thank you so much, Ashley. I, yeah. We kind of need to sign out. This is yeah. fantastic. I'm glad fun. we get to kind of revisit this tomorrow. And Yeah. I'm excited it. to work on some packaging concepts. Packaging. I think tomorrow we're going to try to do like two or three different layouts and try to figure out what we like. And we'll so. need your help with that, too, as well, yeah. as our brain trust yes. of uh, designers and art directors. But yeah. uh, stick around. We have Melody Saburi up next. She's going to be kicking off the uh, daily XD Creative Challenge for, for today. So thank you so much, Ashley. Uh, check out Ashley Honstein. You can uh, click the info tab and mm -hmm. stalk her on social media and all that fun yeah. stuff. Cool. Thank you so much, Ashley. Awesome. Thank Yay. you, everybody. Stick around. Bye.